Okay, now that we've done equipment modeling, let's talk about modeling duct bank and conduits. We're going to do this using an extrude along uh, path, our solid by extrusion method. To do this, we're going to start with a no plot line. So we're going to go up here to E and PLT for no plot. We're going to identify the path that we want to extrude along. I always start here by starting with this and using it as essentially a center line in our path we can hopefully identify where we're going to run into any conflicts before we get into the full extrusion. There are other ways to do this and this is my preferred method. So let's say we're going to run a conduit from this switch gear or switchboard over to the wall. Are they then going to turn up the wall. So again, connect with E3, hit D, change our UCS. Let's see, we're going to go up 10 feet. And right click to stop. Now, when I was creating that line, you'll notice that I have, I am using a smart line and the join elements is on. This is key. If you want to simplify the process, there are ways to extrude and create your path after the fact, but I find it much easier to sit here and create line segments and then create one single smart line on top of that, especially when we get into creating duct banks because that will, in many cases, require a smart line that could be hundreds of feet long. So we've created this segment and we need to now create what is going to be extruded along that segment. We go up here, we'll go into place circle, we're going to start at this end and see we're still on no plot. We don't want this to be on a no plot, we actually want it to show up. So let's come up here, there are myriad of layers we could use. Let's come up here to E, cable, or to how about E circuit. Let's say this is a control circuit. Something this switchboard's reporting back. We're going to create a circle. And let's make it it's a one inch conduit. So we'll put in our half distance as a radius. You could also do this by setting the diameter in the controls. Left click and then right click. Finish our extrusion or our circle. And now we do a solid along extrusion. We select our path, select the item we're going to extrude, and then left click. Oh, it makes this cute little 90 degree down here at the bottom, which while accurate to the line is not accurate to how we would normally run conduit. And when you delete it, it all disappears. So let's go ahead and undo and go back. So using our alt and left click, let's switch back to the no plot layer and go back into our smart line. Now what we can do is change our vertex type to rounded and set a radius. Let's say it's a 12 inch or one foot radius on that lower bend. Let's redraw our smart line. And now you have something that looks more akin to how we would actually extrude run conduit. We're also going to check two things in the solid by extrusion window. Keep path and keep profile. This is going to keep our selections so if say we have to change something and we delete the extrusion we just made we still have our path and profile so solved by extrusion select your path select your profile left click and now we have a conduit now the great thing about doing it this way is if you have to say then pattern this so let's do a pattern we're going to do a 
rectangle. It's two by two. We're going to space these things out, say, four inches on each side. And go ahead and hit enter for now we're, because we're going to change things. We can select all of those. Select on the path. And then holding the control key, we can select multiple profiles to then extrude in that same manner. And what it does is increase that radius on the initial path and make it all concentric. So if you're running multiple conduits, this is extremely useful. Now, right now, or as it sits, our path and profile are stuck in the wall, so we need to fix that. So we can go in, remove the extrusions we've made, move our initial rectangle, or our square path. We're going to move this to where it's inside the wall, or not inside the wall. So let's add two-inch spacer in there because they would use something, say, like Unistrut to run this up the wall. I'm go in here. This time I'm going to start at the top because we know that's correct. Come down here to our intersection. V, let's change our axis. Back over to the switchboard. Looks like we're in a wall here too, so let's go ahead and move that off. We're doing a crossing window, we've now selected everything. Move those two inches off the wall as well. So now we can go back in. And there we go. We now have our conduits. Oh no, I never had any before. So you can sit here and you can play around with it and play around with it and with it until you get to where you need to be. So let's say, let's come down here to our front view. Spin those up to where they're coming out like six inches. It's not very realistic. They're, these conduits would actually come out at the top, but you get the general idea. So now we have our conduits in the model. And that is the general idea of how we're going to model duct banks as well. We just change the profile that we or type of profile we use or the uh, so let's take for example this DB line here this is actually a duct bank running from the exterior of the building out to a manhole that is then fed by transformers we'll start with a no plot line and we're going to create a series of depth markers that in this case are 18 inches deep. So we're going to create one there. We want to pull this one out and copy it. And then copy it here as well. So if we figure this line is at finish grade, these are then putting us 18 inches below finish grade, which is our standard for lower voltages if it goes higher than low voltage, there are additional requirements there. We're also going to change our rounding radius to five feet. We try and keep this at a minimum, a minimum bending radius of about three to the inside of the curve. So setting it to five at the center line should keep us well within our tolerances. Now we have our path, we have our depth markers, and we need a profile. So we're going to change the level. We're going to go up here to E duct. E duct or E electrical duct. Either is appropriate. 
if you need to split it out and have like low voltage ducting and medium voltage ducting and you have to split this out and split them out in the model so they're easily identifiable it's separate uh, it is your couple of options you could also create specific layers for those so let's use the duct I'm gonna create a rectangle one this time I'm going to change our method. Instead of orthogonal, we're going to use rotated. This is going to allow us to set each side's lengths separately. So let's say this is a three foot wide and two foot deep duct bay, which is probably a lot bigger than it actually is. These measurements are generally provided by your engineer or you can get some additional training on how to do the math there. But it's the same thing in the long run as creating our conduits. Select your path, select your profile, left click, and now we have a duct bank. Generally speaking, my methodology on creating duct banks is to start sharp and with join elements off. This is and on no plot. So you sit here, set your 2D path, and go from there. If you leave this rotate AccuDraw segments on, it's going to allow you to create these 90 degrees if you have, say, an off angle where you're following a roadway or a building outline. Now, once we have these, this rough routing in place where it's strictly just straight and level, we'll go back in, copy these depth markers to each intersection. And then adjust those to where the top matches are triangles provided by our civil department, either internally or our subs. From there you can set your elevations and your routing. If there's a specific conflict that we need to avoid where we need to be, say, six inches above or below a pipe, I will use these depth markers to do that as well. So let's say in the middle of this line there is a pipe that we need to avoid, so we need to go down, say, an additional foot or a concrete curb or whatever it may be. And then go back into Smart Line, set this back to rounded, join elements, and go through and play, connect the dots with the depth markers. And now you have the realized path for your duct bank. You can extrude it. Typically, this is like an iterative process. I rarely get it right the first time through. I'll grab all the conflicts I can see, get everything set, and then turn everything off and on one at a time just to make sure that everything I should be avoiding is avoided and that I'm not say I missed something like there's a massive ditch here that I didn't see initially that my duck bank isn't showing through um, the triangles for the surface so that's it that's pretty quick and dirty on how to do duck banks and conduits and next we'll talk about extractions